Wellington fine, light winds and 14. Christchurch fine, evening cloud, light winds, 16 degrees. Dunedin cloudy at times with winds tending southwest, 16 the high there. You're listening to RNZ National. It's 10 past eight. And you're with Morning Report. Well, it's the battle of the two former Labour Party cabinet ministers, the race for the Auckland mayoralty. Roughly one third of the country lives in Auckland, but the council says it's facing significant challenges, bad congestion, beaches polluted with sewage each time it rains, and a shortfall of 45,000 homes. To top that off, it says climate change poses such a threat to the environment it could ultimately affect the way of life for all Aucklanders. This is the last in our Morning Report mayoral debate series before local uh, voting closes on October the 12th. You can listen or watch us live on rnz.co.nz, Freeview Channel 50 or Facebook. Well, joining us now in our Auckland studio are the city's sitting mayor, Phil Goff, and his main rival, John Tamahiri. Kia ora, Kia ora. to you both. Kia ora. Good morning. John Tamahiri. We will start with your comments yesterday, which have caused a bit of a firestorm. Do you, do you regret making the Sikh Heil comment? No. Not Why not? Why not? Well, we're in a 45-minute debate. Uh, Goss team goes and cuts and pastes it. Uh, and uh, what the moderator, the moderator says and posts that it was all fake. Now, here's the, here's the thing. The context is extraordinarily important. The question was, would I ban two right-wing Canadians from use of Auckland City properties? The answer to that question is absolutely not. And the reason why is... You have got to defend the right for freedom of speech. You can't have a dictator determine that if you don't think like Goff, you're not allowed to okay. use the property. But the, the argument from the likes of the Holocaust Centre, from the likes of the Race Relations Commissioner, is that it doesn't matter what the context was, that comment is hurtful to many, many people. No, no, hang on. Uh, you don't corner the market when the New Zealand division fought against Nazism and won. You don't corner the market when my uncles are laying at Monte Cassino and in uh, North Africa and then come back over here and say, I cannot determine freedom of speech in my own country that they fought for. I, I get, I get that the Jewish folk can corner the market on the Holocaust and it's terrible. Zig Hale, for a guy that acts like Hitler, is fair enough in a debate. <laughs> you have got form on this. Oh, gosh, that's you, amazing. You, you questioned whether people were hearing too much about the Holocaust uh, back when Alan Clark was Prime Minister. No, no, well, so, what, so the point I'm making is you know that these types of comments are provocative and hurt people. Did you make this comment deliberately to oh, provoke? No, no, what happened was we're in a 45-minute... Look, go and look at the 45-minute debate. You're taking uh, one line out of a full context. You've got to look at the context of this thing rather than the cut and paste. Well, the story. Look, I just come Why? back... Before I come to Phil Goff, the point I make again is that the Race Relations con con Commissioner and others have said it doesn't matter what the context is, the comment itself yeah, but they're not my offensive. Thought, yeah, but they're not my thought police, nor are you, nor is Goff. This is a free country. I've got a right to freedom of expression. Okay, let's put that to Phil Goff. Yeah. <clears throat> were were well, you acting like a dictator yeah. in telling those two Canadians, as abhorrent as they may be, that they couldn't speak here? No, yes, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I don't have the power to tell them they can't speak here. They're free to come here. I can't ban them from coming you here. You acted like you uh, did. No, At the time, no, you were no, on Twitter, tell, you were on I'll the Q&A yeah. show, I interviewed you about yeah. it. You, and I'll, and you I'll came tell you, out acting Corrin, as though you were banning them. No, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what I, I said. Current, I, I <clears throat> find those two individuals with their insulting and demeaning comments about minority ethnic and faith groups in New Zealand absolutely abhorrent. So do I. I said I didn't want the people here, and I stand by that. I don't want them here. Do I have the power to ban them? Of course I do. Did you or did you not initially claim to have banned them? No, no. What, I'm, what I've said is that I didn't want them here, and I applauded the decision of the Regional Facilities Auckland, who yes, had the yes power. Yes or no? Did you say power. that or not? No. If you look at all of my comments in context, you'll see exactly what I said. And I want to come back to what John he was saying. I, no, 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 come on, I didn't interrupt you. No, you did give, us, give, us a, give, us a, give us a fair go. Well, you give me a fair the, go. The, the, context, the context of John's comment last uh, the night before okay. last <clears throat> was very clear. I was talking about wanting a an inclusive and diverse city, and I was talking with pride about a grandchild that I'm expecting that will be of mixed heritage. It had nothing to do with that, that comment. No, if you, anybody that goes back and looks at it, it's yeah, all online. So. You can see what the truth is, yeah. and that's where you came in with Sig Hale. And can we, not only okay, was I astounded, but so too was Mr. the God, audience Mr. God, and the commentator. You, whether you dispute whether you banned them or not, 
should do you think you should have been able to ban them if even if you couldn't? No, no, I don't. I don't. I don't have because that's I don't, the issue. Is I don't it, is have that you that right, acted in but, a way. But I tell you what, I do have the right to do, and that is to express zero tolerance for bigotry, prejudice, and racism. And we all and do. that's what those three. That's what those two people should. represented to me. The, so do I make but, any apology for this? The strong comments I made against them and what they were coming to New Zealand to do, absolutely okay, not. One but final comment from you. But you don't suppress them. Look, look but I didn't. The, the beauty but about, I didn't. The beauty about our democracy is it's not. this is not Gotham City, this is Auckland City. And you just can't get uh, someone to control somebody's thoughts and somebody's actions and what they can say. Nobody needs to talk like Gough, think like Gough, but in a democracy you've got every right to have a robust debate. You're not here. So, John Tomahiri, do you feel mm. that in some way free speech is being stifled, not just in Auckland, but in this country? No, you, you and I know that there's a major debate raging around hate speech and how you might regulate that. We go down a very, very slippery slope if we allow people like Mr Goff to ban others because he finds them reprehensible. I do. I find what I find what Brash says and what Hobson's Choice say reprehensible, but guess what? I defend Brash's right to say it in my country because it's a great country we should uphold that freedom hey, of expression. Hey, this is all fake news, Don, Don Tamahiri. Yeah. Hey, I never banned anybody. What I did was a, I spoke out against something that is abhorrent you, in a multicultural city them. and what, well you, you see that, them. he's making it up. I didn't ban them. I didn't ban them. Go back to his but, quotes. But, hang on, no, no. You on. Just, just, just come down to this. <clears throat> this is a multicultural city. This is a city that a whole lot of people took offence at what you said yesterday. You didn't apologise for that. Well, they can vote, you didn't they apologise when you, you offended people that were victims of sexual assault. Well, you can, didn't apologise when you offended women look, by making degrading look, comments about them. Look, you didn't apologise <laughs> when you offended the rainbow uh, community I, by making I, derogatory I comments this. about them. Yeah. You know, you don't learn from your mistakes, John. That's your problem. Oh, you go out, you okay, say things no, no, okay, no, 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 to the people, to that. and you never yeah. apologise. Yeah, you your response. Oh, but, but I'm not a thought policeman like him, and, and I'm not from the disconnected elite that runs the Labour Party like him. Where I come from, and my, my side of the street, we express ourselves differently, right? That's not to say we're wrong, and we don't. We shouldn't get beat up just because I come from West Auckland, working class, twelve kid family. I, I, I don't come from his perfect world. Okay, and I, I don't make any um, apologies for that. I am better for my mistakes, and we all make them. This guy's perfect. But, but you don't learn from your mistakes. No, no, that's no, the whole no, point, no. But you, don't you just keep saying making saying offensive Sikha comments mistake, about people. Yeah. No, not at all. Not in the context of the debate. It's a forty-five-minute <laughs> vigorous. debate debate uh, over, okay. o- over okay, so, the future so that, of the city. that justifies can using we, a Nazi slogan. Can we, yeah, yeah, yeah right. that's absolutely that's, for you. It's it's absolutely for right. For you, yeah. Phil, that's right. But but can we talk about some matters of substance in the city now, as opposed to yes. going off on these yes. sorts of rabbit holes? I think holes. we've covered that well enough. Ihumatau, mm. which is the other issue that has blown up over the last 24 hours, it's been running for a very long time, and the council does have a role to play here. Sol, the mm. protest group, has said it would like to see the council potentially involved. Phil Goff, would you consider helping buy that land for the mana whenua? Uh, we won't be spending $40 million on buying that land. We have already bought and made available for the public and for Māori alike, for perpetuity, 92 hectares of the key heritage historical and geological land. It's called uh, Otuatawa, uh, Stonefields. And just a month ago, we added to that public domain 8.9 hectares of a, 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 a block <coughs> of land called the Rennie Block. It is not the role of council to sort out treaty settlements. So no That's money. Be, that we, we, we have created already over 100 hectares of heritage land there that will be preserved okay, forever. Clear. John Tamahiri, would you see a council put some money in? No, but the option and leadership as the Mayor uh, should weigh in quite heavily here. How? There are a whole range of different sites that you could swap out with um, Fletcher's, if necessary, as part of the negotiation, uh, using using council land. Yeah, you not, got any examples? Not council money. Not council money. There's multiple ones under Panu. There's three billion dollars worth of land out here. So that there are there are uh, there. Are, if the crown is stretched. Uh, for doing any deals out so there. So Fletcher gets some land somewhere else to Well, yeah, yeah, but not at the expense of the rate payer. You see, Aucklanders right now are getting triple tapped 
um, tax, from the petrol tax all the way through to sales taxes, we can't afford uh, to make a play financially. What we can do is come forward with some land option swap outs. But it has to be a, a zero sum game in terms of our balance. Is that acceptable to you, Phil Goff? Sounds like a reasonable the only, idea. The only, the only piece of land that Sol suggested was a piece of land that is a buffer between the, the sewage treatment plant at uh, uh, at Mangari and the neighbouring area, and that's not a suitable area. No, no it's not to do with Sol. No, this is a Fletcher swap out. This is a Fletcher swap yeah, out, right? But D- different conversation. No, no. Uh, look. One way or the other, you would be spending the equivalent of $40 million worth of the ratepayers' money. No, that, is not, that is not our role as council. Our role as council, I think we've played it very responsibly. Uh, we've listened to what the petitioners said from Seoul. We added another 8.9 hectares of land. We have, oh, created, uh, uh, we have created a pretty special area out okay, at you made that point. Um, I want to move on now to, to some big promises that both of you have been making. Michael Barnett, Chamber of Commerce, says, let's have honesty in the local government election, not headline grabbing for votes with promises that are unrealistic. I'll start with your Mm. promise, which is to barge 250 uh, used cars off the wall. 250,000. 250,000 used cars, but 250 a day uh, 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 on a barge, which... Would no, be, it's not 250,000 a day. Which would that's, need... That's, 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 that's no, not, it's 250,000 a 250 year. Come on, you're only day. out by 364 250 days. 250 cars a day. The yeah. point is... It would no, it's, more, it's more than three. It's more than two hundred and fifty okay. cars a day. Look, the, the, it's, it's a lot of stretching. It's a lot of money. No, no, no. It's a lot of investment. Okay, is let, it realistic? Let, let, let me answer that. Of course, it's realistic. It's so realistic that the ports of Auckland are looking at that as an option right now. At my request, it is a proposal put up by a group called PTS. They own land, or they are leasing land up at Highbrook. That has access along the Tamaki estuary. Uh, it is an area that has been dredged in the past because we had the, the oil-fired uh, um, generation, electricity generating station there. It is a realistic prospect, and if we can achieve that, one, we can get the cars off the wharf quicker, and two, we can stop the cars getting off the wharf on the back but of trucks congesting a, the central you've city just area. Car park there, yes, so but I don't that's, see but no, port- that's exactly part of it. If you mm. want to deal with the amount of cars that come in in any one day on those car freighters, you need both the parking facility that is being built and the ability so, to barge so out. So this is a realistic that promise. Way, this it, will happen. It, it, that I, I've said exactly what I've said. I've put that on the table. Okay. It's a proposal by a company that takes 80% of the used cars now, and the ports think that it's sufficiently realistic that they've undertaken mm. to examine it and to try to implement it. Okay, John Tomahiri. No, you... no, ultimately, uh, the port must retreat from that 77 hectares of some of the most iconic and superb land Auckland has got. To do that, you've got to put a a rational approach in. Turning uh, the Tamaki River into a new Venice with barges going up and down it all the time is a stretch. So um, what I'd I'd say to you is is that over time, that traffic is going to migrate south and north of us over time. Um, And it's as simple as that. We can't continue to import 300,000 used cars fossil guzzling at that uh, across that border w- without any uh, tariff on it to change behaviours. OK. Well, let's come to your promise then, because <coughs> you'd still build an 18-lane bridge over the ha- uh, harbour. <coughs> That's still going to have plenty of fossil guzzling cars going over, oh, yeah, oh, Absolutely. And uh, the, the key to that is this. Even if we expense the $28 billion ATAP budget on completing the Auckland network, you won't get any more than 10% of okay, Auckland's out of cars. OK, here's my question for you on the bridge. Yeah. What happens when you're building it? Where do the car? Can your cars keep going over it, or do yes, they, they have can. to? Yes, they can. So you never. So there's no disruption. It's to ca- traffic. Of course, there's disruption, but not to the extent of closing so the whole bridge down. When you're building these extra lanes and putting a rail line on no, the top, two, no, there's. It's, do you, do it's, you shut the bridge down for a while, or do you no, keep it going the whole time? No, you keep it going the whole time. Really? No, hang on. You, you'll shut it down uh, in uh, twilight hours, right? But um, okay, so the bridge no, will peak, be shut in the no, evening. No, no, but in peak in peak traffic hours, you, you don't need to because it's cantilevered. Because you're building it off the substructure that's already in place. Now, uh, I, I have come up with an option. He says, wait till 2030. We have to finish the network in Auckland because, as you know, uh, in Auckland here on the gridlock, one one accident on any one part of our network and it bumps up everywhere, right? So uh, the, the shore deserves, and the people from Mockworth all the way down deserve a crystallised okay, option. Let's hear Phil Goff's response to that. Yeah. Well, well, my response is that's a total fantasy. First of all, if you take the last 10 years, the number of passenger cars going across the Harbour Bridge hasn't increased at all. Do you know why that is, Corinne? 
buses. Because you've got the Northern Busway. Oh, this we've invested. This we've invested. No, look, come on. I gave you a fair go, mate. Oh. You just let me oh. say what I'm All saying right, and reply to you. Okay, yeah, then. just try to do it with a bit of decorum <laughs> and dignity, Gentlemen, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, first of all. Um, all of the planning says that you will need to do something after 2030, and the best proposal will be a tunnel. Why a tunnel? Because John likes to think he can run a train over the top of the Harbour Bridge. The gradient, to the best of my knowledge, from what engineers have told me, would be over 6%. Trains can't run on 6%. No. But the, the, key, the anyway. key argument is this. Why, so why, would, way, why would you create a huge bridge... When you're, conge when, when you're funnelling all of those people into a city that can't take that, that sort of congestion, the answer is going to have to be in the public transport area, not creating wider and wider bridges and motorways but to funnel more cars into the city centre. Like, oh, this is never going to happen, it's miles away. No, no, it, it's, there's, the plans are there and the, 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 the work is actually underway procuring the properties needed to protect the routes that the, that the tunnel will take Okay, will quick response from John to that. Look, look. I mean, it, it's there, it's the best advice we've got from NZ TA, Auckland Transport and the experts, Look, within, not one person within, that's a, a yeah, supposedly okay. a professor within the, in the, the school of engineering. Within, within the first three years of my mayoralty, there will be a solution. Whether uh, it is uh, well worked through a tunnel or whether it is a superstructure... Oh, so it might not be a on, bridge. On the, no, absolutely, because see, you've got no solutions, Phil. I'm, I'm actually... <laughs> well, is the bridge I'm a actually, promise or not? I'm actually a candidate. Uh, I don't have the millions of dollars you've been so, sitting so on. So is the bridge a promise or so, not? You, so I don't have the millions of dollars that you've been sitting on and doing nothing with. Uh, we will get a result by 2023 in terms of a solution, and we will start the building of it so shortly might thereafter. Bridge. M might not be, but because we haven't had a, the robust consultation. But what you've got to do is bring forward the conversation from 2030, where he's kicked the can down the road. So can you just say whatever you want then, in terms of promises? You promise a bridge, and they say it might not be a bridge. It might, it might not be a bridge, but here's the other. <laughs> thing. But it will be a crossing. Well, oh, of, co of course, when of you've course, got a harbour, no, no, you have you, to have a crossing. Well, of course, and, and, <laughs> but, but he's, he's, he's delayed it till 2030. The people on the shore and the people on this side of the harbour. So harbor why not can't say to why not say to voters? I want to have a discussion about this issue. Maybe a bridge is, an, uh, is the option rather than we're going to build a bridge. No, well, because you've got to uh, advance a policy and you've got to advance a solution to start the conversation and the debate. I've done that and we've done a very good job about it this morning. And you wonder no, why no, some no. people qu question that you, you liken you to Donald Trump. Well, I, I, I don't know. No, Donald Trump, uh, you don't look anything like me. That's point one. Point two, I hate golf. No, I don't really. My, my wife sold my clubs. I think we're talking about the personality thing, characters. The third thing, is, and the third thing I've never said build a wall on the Tasman to keep the oh, Aussies but you did out. Say, but somebody else will pay for it. <laughs> Fair enough. I want to come to climate change. Uh, Phil Goff, is this the number one priority for your council if you were to be re-elected? Oh, I think it's the biggest issue over the next ten years, yes. Uh, and Are you proud is... of your track record so far? Yeah, yeah. Look, I think uh, we were right to make the, the, the climate emergency declaration. I think we were right to put in our last long-term budget 40 million uh, as the preliminary work on climate and change and 90 million into coastal management protection. And what we're doing now is devising an action plan. Why is it the biggest issue? But it, it, is this something that Auckland by itself will solve? If patently not. It's got to be something that we do citywide, nationwide but internationally but we can't ignore the reality of climate change which is going to result in enormous environmental and economic uh, costs. Just very quickly, so how many electric buses are there in Auckland at the moment? Uh, what we've got at the moment is we're, we're trialling two. We've got six ordered for next year. How, how many are there? So, sorry, and, and, and another, and, and several more. And you will know that there I said... There are three, aren't there? No, no, no you, I'm telling you how many there are and how many there are planned. And you might have listened to the announcement that I made in my campaign launch that it is my policy, it's already my policy that by, 20, by 2025 we'll be purchasing no carbon emitting buses. I made that with one of the top 13 cities at the world at the C40 conference and I've said already that we need to bring that forward and that government has to do for buses what it's already done for cars. That is provide an incentive for councils right across the country, not just Auckland, to replace their diesel <coughs> buses with okay, electric John buses Tomahiri, because they're more expensive. Climate change, what would be your top priority to, because it is Transport emissions is the big biggie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and the key to that is to endeavour to um, cut back on congestion, where we're significant. Uh, that's where the most significant Belgium comes from. To do that, you've just got to stop the war on cars. Uh, this, this Auckland Transport, there's no doubt, they've rephased the lights. They've taken four lanes down to two lanes. They've stopped left-hand turns. If you can move vehicles uh, a, a lot better, and we're not going to get away from vehicles in the next 25 to 30 years, uh, it's just pie in the sky. Mm -hmm. So get ready for a mix and segue and take the populations with you in terms of your bike lanes and everything else, because it's just a nonsense Would you support congestion charging? 
I already have announced it in terms of the trucks going to the port who will work in the twilight hours because we, we've got to smooth the uh, traffic going on in an eight-hour envelope. To do that, you you move your supply side of the economy 24-7. So in other words, warehousing, trucking and the like will, will work in the twilight hours and then you, you smooth the volumes. Okay. No, here's here's the, 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 mm. some of the critical things that we're doing. First of all, if you take people out of cars because you provide good public transport, you massively reduce <coughs> the pollution levels as well as the congestion levels. It's not a war on cars, it's providing people with <coughs> suitable alternative uh, means of getting around There's the city. Not here's a figure for you, Corin, and I'm really proud of it. There was a 21.5% increase in the people we were carrying on rapid public transit last year. That is world beating. I don't think there's a city in the world that has done better than that. Secondly, what have we done with the unitary plan? Are we planning to have more and more suburbs and wider and wider motorways? Of course not. We are looking at intensification and we are 90, 95% of the houses and, and apartments that we permitted in the last year were within the urban boundaries. So people will live differently when you've got a city of 2 million than if you're a provincial town of 50,000. So we're making some real changes there. Buses are one aspect of that, and I've made a clear commitment, okay. and we were, we were one of the first cities in New Zealand to do that and one of the first cities in the world to make that uh, commitment. A couple of quick issues that I want to try and get city. through. We've only got a few minutes. It is a great city. Well, we're John. almost finished, in fact. Fantastic um, city. Fanuapai, should there be another airport in Fanuapai? I don't think it's realistic, no. I think we uh, desperately need a second strategically positioned airport. Fenua Pai is in the mix, so are a number of others from either Coatesville or Ardmore. Uh, Auckland, uh, on size and scale, has to future-proof itself. Having a second airport is essential. Well, just, look, I'll tell you why that's unrealistic, <clears throat> because what you've seen, just go up to Whenua Pai, houses are being built all around that, uh, all around that airport. Uh, it has, a, it has a, a, knew, a handful of flights. They knew when they bought it, it has a was handful, an airport. It has a handful of flights through the RNZAF at the moment. a week. Uh, the runway isn't long enough. Uh, the area is not suitable for large planes to come in on, and we're already planning for Auckland International Airport uh, Limited a second runway, and we're making connections so if, with light if, rail if and improved it's to, a no uh, go, motorways. You're it's a possibility. No, oh, we we desperately need a second option for a fast growing Auckland, and you can't have all your eggs in one basket at Mangere. It's as simple as that. Yeah, Gentlemen, well, you can. You, got a future you can proof. in most cities do. Mm. No, but no, you get you, yeah. you you get the mist and the fog problem, then it closes the whole yeah, of our major will it be, will it be different You guys have to carry on with your speaking, <laughs> speaking tour uh, another time. Thank you very much, Thanks, uh, John Tamahiri, Thanks, uh, Mayor Phil Goff. Thank you very much for that. It is now 31 minutes past eight. <laughs>